Final point, Tom, you mentioned that, you know, it, it is the FANG complex that is magnifying the valuation of the overall index. Does that mean avoid that area or are they operating on just like a different energy source? At this point? Uh, it's a great question. You know, I used to do wireless yeah. and so I was a tech analyst for 15 years. You should never sell a tech stock on valuation. So for the FANGs, as long as they have visibility and re positive revisions, their multiples can go up far more than most people would like to see. So it could get very uncomfortable. This is the Zoomer Value Investor here, here to kind of chime in about that Tom Lee clip. And I really wanted to highlight this clip because I think it's really important, especially in today's market. The gestalt idea of what Tom Lee was saying in that clip is that if you have a winning tech stock that is in a winning industry, is in a winning sector of business, a winning niche of business, what Tom Lee is arguing and advocating for is that the correct decision that you should do as an investor is to hold that stock kind of indefinitely until something changes about the structural dominance of that business, but you will never sell it based on like a technical valuation or a valuation multiple. You only sell the business when the business starts doing bad. That's what Tom Lee's trying to say. He's saying that it's not worth taking profits too soon and that's something too easily done in the tech industry. I was looking at my YouTube portfolio a little bit. I was looking at some of the management decisions I was making and I was wondering if this is a mistake that I've been guilty of in my investment decisions. Of course, the nice thing about the YouTube portfolio is even the winners like Google, Amazon, Meta, I really didn't take too much profits on them at all because I know about the structural dominance. I know the inherent idea from Peter Lynch's book of you do have to let your winners run. However, I have been kind of proven that I might in the long run regret those sales because these businesses might grow in line or further as they stretch their valuations even further and their business dominance even further. I might truly regret those sales because these businesses might compound well even further. And as much as profit is profit, as great as it is to throw that term around in the investment industry and just kind of be content with what profits you do get and you are able to roll those into other value stock opportunities on the market. Despite these truths, I think there is a lot of credence that we need to pay Tom Lee and what he was saying specifically about tech stocks. If there's any tech stocks like that in your portfolio who have dominance in a certain part of the tech industry. Is it too soon to sell them? There are two examples I really want to use. One being Applied Materials. Applied Materials was a company that I had in the YouTube portfolio, pretty good sized allocation as well as my personal portfolio. Very serious allocation, somewhere like five to 10% of my personal portfolio and all my assets were in this company at a time. I purchased the company at cost average around $90 and I sold the company around started selling it around like 115 and sold out completely before the 130 mark. I checked the price of the company today. The company's about $150. Had anything really changed about the company? No, not really. And essentially, I could have really ridden the wave up because Applied Materials still remain a very dominant business in what they did, which is applying materials to semiconductor manufacturers and being really that pick and shovel kind of play on that market. The second example I really wanted to use is NVIDIA. Now this is the GPU manufacturer, um, the GPU designer. Um, they are by far the best graphics card designers in the world. Um, they have an amazing data center business. Jensen Hong is an amazing CEO. He's been killing that, killing, killing the management of that business. He's doing a great job. I picked up a couple of shares, just a real starter size position. Nothing nearly as serious as something like Applied Materials, but I did this back when I made my short about NVIDIA, um, when it was around $130 per share and I talked about how I was really watching for $100 per share. I was really in a bearish kind of greedy um, sentiment and I thought that the markets had a lot more room to go down, including NVIDIA, which I was proven to be untrue, which goes to show that sometimes when these great businesses are at discounts like that, you maybe just want to just buy a hefty position anyway even if you do go into the red a little bit. As great as it is, I had a 30% compounding on my YouTube portfolio. I have a friend who took uh, most of his disposable income of the last two years, put it into Nvidia stock, not even at the bottom towards 130, $110 like I was doing. They purchased a lump sum in the $180 per share region and 
honestly, they did great because they didn't sell the stock. They still hold on to it today when it's in like the 480 or so dollars per share region. And they had an amazing return. I mean, absolutely just crushed the return. I thought I'm so special with getting like 30% compounded annually. So it just goes to show that's the power of pick up a great business, even if you think it maybe has room to go down a little bit more. Maybe it might be worth just buying anyway because the smart stock market can fake you out either way, right? You, you wanna buy something and you think you can go lower, it won't go that low. Let's just buy it because it's a great business and it's trading that low anyway. Not only that, we have to think about what Tom Lee's telling us too and that we can't really sell this business because we can't predict when this business will stop going up, when the multiples will stop increasing, when the cash flows will stop growing exponentially because this is the dominant business in that niche tech segment of the market. What's the mistake I did with NVIDIA? Well, I sold a little bit of fractional shares when it hit $380 per share. Right after that godly guidance came out, I sold more of the stock as it breached above $400 per share. I sold about all of it by the time it creeped up even a little higher. If I held on to that entire position, I'd have a lot more money than I actually made. I really did sell out early of that stock and I really made a huge mistake on that one. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I really like what Tom Lee was saying. It really like resonated with me this last part of the interview. Tom Lee's a really interesting character. He's like a hyperbole, always appears on CNBC to do like, you know, that type of like pundit entertainment they do. CNBC, it's important you always kind of think of it like an ESPN for stocks. It's not really there to actually get tangible information. But I would have to say um, Tom Lee is kind of separating himself from the crowd as kind of like a being a popular pundit, right? Because he has been proven, despite his continual bullishness, he has been proven right. And, you know, the markets have had some modicum of recovery. Another thing he's been very right about was he was very bullish on Bitcoin when it was around like $100 per coin. And he was telling all of his Fundstrat clients that they have to take this asset seriously because of the activity with GDP and the Federal Reserve that, you know, the Bitcoin asset cannot be um, taken lightly and considered as like a percentage of the portfolio. And he was very much proven right on that. He's been proven right on things like bank stocks. So as much as I'm against paying credence to CNBC as a whole, because we know that they kind of sell us on kind of like agendas, especially like market-based agendas, trying to think of a stock one way when it actually might be going another way. You know, there's a lot of uh, funds out there that are just trying to pick up cheap shares, right? So you have to consider that a lot of things you hear on something like CNBC, it might not be um, what you need to hear, what's actually good for you to hear, but it's what, what someone else wants you to hear. But uh, when you actually look at like the track record of Tom Lee, and even consider that he actually does want to do well for his fun strike clients. He's really an interesting character. Um, he's, he's one that I think is uh, fun to listen to. I'll, I'll say that. He's kind of like a Stephen A. Smith to me. Uh, really entertaining pundit. Probably like one of the best in the game, I would say. So anyway, uh, I'm getting off topic. Uh, yeah, consider what I was saying about tech stocks, you know. Um, tech stocks are something that I take very seriously. I consider it something, you know, my circle of competence, something I'm always reading about, trying to do better about, trying to learn more about, and just always be a part of. Um, and I really love to get my mind like immersed in this stuff and um, just hopefully I'll make better decisions as an investor going forward too with this knowledge in mind. So what are your thoughts as I conclude this video? Are you more inclined to kind of take profits when you can, or are you more inclined to hold on to great businesses as long as they prove that, hey, we are still great businesses. The former is a little bit more in line with what Elon Musk talked about. I remember he tweeted out some stock advice one time um, because he said people kept asking him for it. And that's more in line with what he said is the exact same thing Tom Lee is. Buy into great businesses and hold on to them um, and only sell them if you notice like significant changes in the product or dominance of the product being worse. I'm the Zoomer Value Investor, signing out. Peace.